Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar session, Why Lean Leaders Are the Catalysts for Successful IT Transformation. My name is Alex Mazurk with Clint Longs and Redwood, and I'll be your host during today's session. Now, uh, I introduce myself. Uh, our presenter today is uh, Niels Loder. He's the principal consultant with the Quinton Group. Um, I just want to cover a few rules for today's webinar. So, let everybody know that uh, the audio is being transmitted via computer. Uh, there's an option for a uh, phone if uh, you are having any trouble over the uh, voice over IP. Um, but everybody is muted except for us, obviously. So, uh, no mics are needed. Um, if you have, but if you have any questions during any portion of this webinar, there is a questions panel. It's on the right side of your GoToWebinar screen. Please ask a question if you have it at any point during this webinar. And at the ending, um, we will have a designated few minutes set aside in which I will read the questions that have accumulated, accumulated aloud, and our presenter today will answer them for all to hear. And last off, if you need to uh, leave for any reason, we are recording this webinar, and all attendees will be sent a, uh, a link to a recording later on so you can get um, access to the full content. Now a few things about our organization before we get started, Quint Wellington Redwood. Um, we're an uh, independent uh, um, IT consulting and training organization. We've been in business now for 25 years. We're celebrating that milestone this year. Uh, we started off in Amsterdam, but today we're a completely global company with uh, offices in Philadelphia, Spain, um, Malaysia, India, and Japan um, with uh, 200 plus consultants uh, doing delivering projects in 49 countries. I'm every single continent except Antarctica. There's nobody really building business down there yet. Um, we're proud to say that we uh, train about 30,000 30, professionals every single year from everything from uh, idle to lean IT uh, to DevOps and plenty of other uh, methodologies and certifications that there are out there. And uh, one of the things that we are proud that we started this program uh, last year was uh, uh, we've now trained over 100 um, unemployed people who are in the job market and uh, they want to uh, you know, modernize their skills and uh, we've, we've, we've trained them and uh, it's a new thing that we're doing for uh, um, people out there who are trying to get back on the market. Now uh, I just want to cover a few key areas where Quit helps organizations. First, we help organize IT. Two, uh, we help them um, blend technology and their business. Three, innovate across their business ecosystems. Four, um, transform um, to high performance. Um, a lot of that has to do with lean IT. Five, um, being smart with data. Um, you know, that's very the most, pretty much the most precious commodity out there these days is data and being smart with it. And six, uh, digitizing their products and services. Now I want to start hand things over to our presenter today, Neil Zoder. We're uh, very happy to have him with us. Um, he's a principal consultant with us, but he's also the content board lead of, at the Lean IT Association, the chief examiner of Lean IT at APMG. Uh, Niels, as always, thank you again for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Alex. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I always like doing these uh, these webinars. Um, uh, welcome to this webinar. Yeah, we're going to be talking today about uh, about leadership, about making sure that uh, that your lean transformations actually work. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, you know what the what the challenges for for IT leaders. We'll go through uh, four key behaviours and, and what you can really do to uh, to start. Um, so let's uh, let's move on uh, and and have a look at uh, what um, IT leaders are actually dealing with at the moment. But before I go into into IT, I just want to take a little look at um, another industry, um, which is uh, the car industry. If we look at the uh, the car industry. Industry, what we see is that there there was this development from you know around 1880 onwards, um, in which uh, we, we're looking at what's what we call the artisan phase, where you've got these generalists, you've got uh, craftsman and apprentice kind of uh, relationships, um, and there's this huge learning curve in producing unique products. Now this is uh, this is something uh, that uh, that happens um, as as we learn to to create a, a new product. Now if we from about the 1920s onwards, uh, we see that particularly Henry Ford uh, moves into really standardizing those products, um, and we we come into what we we can call the the mass production phase of our. Um, uh, of our industry. Um, the interesting thing about this is, is not so much those production lines that you may have in, in uh, may spring to mind at the moment, um, but it's all about uh, creating specialists. So we we get we train up somebody to do a single task really well and really quickly. 
And then we coordinate all those specialists um, it's to, to produce these standardized products. And what you see is, is the other end of the curve is, is like this ultra short learning curve. You know, you learn how to put on the, the left back wheel of a car. You know, that's what you do for the, for, the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the year. So you learn it very quickly and you do it over and over again. Now, around the 50s, um, there's a company called Toyota that's uh, already uh, starting to look at different ways of doing things. Um, and uh, you probably all realize that there's the Toyota production system, which really led to what we now call lean production. And there we see a slightly different uh, way of organizing ourselves. We're, we're focusing on the flow of value through our processes. We're creating more generalized specialists, so people who can do more than just one thing. And in in fact, we're bringing them together in uh, teams, in multidisciplinary teams that create a, a part of a, a product or a whole product. And the learning curve is, is not as short as it used to be, uh, but it's not as long as, as having to learn everything. Now, the interesting thing, obviously, is, is uh, this is the development of the, the car industry. But if we look at IT, we have exactly the same development that, that we're going through, um, 1950s through to well, the, the, the entrance of the PC in, in 1982, it would be what I call the, the artisan phase. We then moved into our mass production phase, and I believe that, that uh, around 2010, you know, the last uh, decade or so, we've moved into our lean production uh, paradigm. And this is something that is, uh, is very important important to realize that we're actually not in some kind of hype or we're not in some kind of uh, a fad that we're going through. We are actually moving our whole industry from one way of working to another. Now, if we look at the uh, mass production uh, side of our uh, phase of our industry, um, we see that ITIL uh, is a classic artifact. It's all about specialization. It's all about coordination. And it's all about describing how our industry actually works. Um, and that means it's, it still has a relevance uh, in, in the future because it, it, it describes the key activities that we need to do, solving incidents, doing changes, these kind of things. Okay. But then we see that uh, with the instance of things like Agile, we're starting to uh, apply these lean principles that have been around since you know, the 50s, 60s uh, in the car industry. And people are seeing that this is, uh, this is really kind of working. Um, so how can we apply this to at least part of our organization? And Agile looks particularly from the, the software development perspective um, at, at applying these, these lean principles. Um, there, there are also some uh, kind of mass production aspects within Agile in terms of saying, okay, well, we, we, uh, we have our, our clearly defined roles, we have um, uh, things that, that, um, uh, that, that are, are fully described in terms of coordination and, and specialization, but, but still the principles are slightly more uh, lean oriented. Um, what does that mean? Well, we're, we're actually moving into a phase where lean IT, DevOps, Agile, these are all uh, kind of, kind of um, ways that, that lean principles are being used with IT. And as I said, this is a, um, a trend that is moving um, and nobody will be able to escape this. Um, and in fact, um, you know, the, if you look at the car industry, the ones who tried to escape the, the lean production phase uh, in, uh, in car industry, in the car industry have basically failed. Um, it would look at uh, the, uh, the, the UK car industry from uh, the, you know, the, the 60s and 70s, look at the, the Russian car industry. You know, these are industries that have just died because uh, they, they didn't tackle the, um, the move to, to lean production. So I believe that the, the same kind of thing is going to happen to, to the IT industry um, and businesses will start to fail because they're not making that move to lean production in IT. So what's, what's the essence of leadership uh, in, in a lean environment? Well, 
there's some interesting research that was done by uh, Jez Humble and Nicole Forsgren, their uh, organization, DORA, DevOps uh, Research Association. Um, and one of the uh, one of the little sentences in the in, in later on in one of their uh, reports is IT positively affects uh, or IT performance positively affects organizational performance. And in fact, this little sentence of six words has a huge impact on on us as as IT professionals. Um, what it means is um, if you have a high performing IT organization, you can help to create a high performance business. Um, the converse is also true. So uh, if you have a poorly uh, performing IT organization, the chances are that it will drag down your business performance. And we're seeing this more and more in businesses, uh, often retail businesses that are that are big on the high street, but uh, fail to make that real step towards high performance IT. And they're losing out to the, to the uh, businesses that do have high performance IT. Um, so this is a very important uh, uh, finding um, that is a real uh, push for um, lean for IT leaders to become lean IT leaders. So, what's the key deliverable of of IT leadership and specifically lean IT leadership? It's it's to help develop other leaders to create a high performance IT organization. So, leaders are people who create other leaders, um, and what we're trying to do is trying to make sure that these leaders all work towards producing high performance IT organizations that are really uh, delivering quickly to their customers at, at low costs with low um, uh, incidents um, and high quality uh, functionality. What is that? Uh, what, is, what is the key aspect that, that uh, accompanies that is um, leading with respect? Now, this is uh, this is interesting. This is a, um, a workshop that uh, that Mike Orson does. Uh, um, he he looks at uh, the the seven key aspects of leading with respect, and it's it's all about these uh, very simple behaviors which we don't really see enough within IT um, that leaders need to. To start getting used to so it's all about learning it's about making sure that you continue to understand what does it mean to become a lean uh, lean organization lean it organization um, and it's it is different than a mass production organization um, we'll, we'll have a look at that in, in just a little while um, it's about going getting out of your office and really going and seeing for yourself uh, and, and when you get out there listen to what's going on rather going rather than going and telling people what they, they should be doing um, uh, what we find is that with the use of uh, visual management we uh, and, and again we'll come to that in a minute um, you don't need to um, uh, tell people what to do but it's more about coaching the behavior it's all about uh, looking beyond just the content and looking at how people actually do their work. Um, and in doing that, we need to support other people. We need to um, you know, tell them where they're doing a good job and where they uh, can need a, a little bit of help. Um, uh, one of the ways to actually support people is to create a meaningful challenge. You know, get people to contribute to your organization. Um, we find uh, time and again, um, IT people who are still responsible for the um, for the mainframe and they're sitting out in the corner of, a, of an IT organization, just um, actually just fading away. Uh, and uh, everybody's kind of hoping that we can get rid of the mainframe at some stage, but somehow or other, we we can't quite get rid of it, um, but we don't help these people to, uh, to, to contribute to the organization enough. Um, and it's all about fostering teamwork, and I'll come back to teamwork uh, in, a, in a little while. So uh, one of the key things is that um, leaders are busy. So uh, they're, they're, uh, they see that lean and lean production in IT is, is important, um, but uh, you know it's it's for the workflow. Right? You know I I don't need to get that involved. I've still got loads of other stuff to do, and I've got to manage my boss, and I've got to manage all, all kinds of other stuff. Um, and really, yeah, I, I don't know whether I can get any benefits out of it as a leader. Um, and beyond that, you know, I, I don't even have an idea of what I need to do as a leader. Um, and oh yeah, by the way, I just don't have time to uh, to learn this stuff either. 
Well, this is uh, this is one of the the things I come across a lot uh, when when trying to coach uh, managers and uh, uh, and management teams, and uh, the the most successful ones end up being able to find time to actually think about what it means to manage a, a lean production organization or a lean IT organization. And it does take time. You know, the the four hour executive uh, session that uh, in which you uh, get you know all the terms and all the uh, all the jargon, um, so that you can go out there and, and pretend to know what's going on. It's just not enough. Um, it, when you see that that transformations, these transformations take anything from two to to six, seven years. Um, it's uh, and and in fact, it's a continuing process after that you realize that as a leader, you really do need to get into the nitty gritty of what it means to uh, manage a, a lean IT organization. So what are those those key behaviors beyond you know, leading with respect is kind of a fundamental thing that you have to have as a, as a leader anyway. Um, but what are those four key behaviors? Well, the first is uh, taking the time to commit to self-development. And um, that basically means that you need to create time in your agenda to uh, practice new behaviors, to uh, determine uh, what the, the, uh, the lean principles actually mean to you. So um, customer, uh, customer value, uh, how do you know whether you're delivering customer value? How do you know whether the value streams that go through your, uh, your part of the organization are working properly? Um, are they in flow? Do you, uh, do you see wasteful work happening? What happens in, in your organization? And to be able to do that, you need to create what's called leader standard work which is all about understanding uh, or, or making sure that the things that you have to do are done as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, things like uh, resource planning, things like coaching need to be planned in um, so that they can be done at a specific time uh, consistently throughout the week or throughout the month or, or in fact every day. Um, one of the uh, one of the habits we try to get managers into is a to go to day starts with with teams so the daily stand ups um, and uh, particularly to actually check the numbers so uh, how many incidents were there yesterday was it more or less than than the day before um, how well did we solve them did we have a lot of outstanding uh, service requests or changes that we haven't uh, that we didn't deal with what does our in inventory look like these are the things that, that leaders need to look at on a daily basis so that they know what they're talking about. The second behavior is, is all about going out there and coaching and developing others. And one of the key behaviors here is uh, the Gemba walk. Uh, Gemba is the, the place where work is done. And really, we need to get managers out of their office and getting out into the, uh, um, into the organization and really seeing what's going on. So not getting all kinds of reports through three uh, hierarchical levels, but really going out there um, observing what's going on, engaging with the people and helping them to find ways to improve things. So not telling them what to improve, but challenging them to, uh, to find uh, ways to improve the way they do their work. And in fact, there was, uh, I just happened to talk to a, one of the uh, leaders uh, that I'm coaching uh, today, and he'd gone out and talked to a team, and he was flabbergasted about how much fabulous information he got from this team in literally half an hour of engaging with them and, and observing you know, how they did their work. Um, he didn't have to ask a lot of questions. He didn't have to uh, you know, tell them to do anything. He just listened to what they were saying. And this, uh, the, the richness of the information helped him to really get a better feel for, for where the challenges are in each of these teams. And, and this is one of the more difficult things to do. It, it means making time to go out there. It means going out and going on and trying to understand where the challenges are. Um, the third behavior is all about continuous improvement. 
Um, and uh, usually what happens is, is continuous improvement is seen as this workflow thing. So everybody's got to solve problems and, and improve the, the, uh, the way they work in the team. Um, but in fact, there is a very important role for leadership in driving continuous improvement. In fact, I would uh, almost say that the leadership hierarchy is there to inject energy into the system so that continuous improvement can actually take place um, and what does what does this mean it means a that we need to have a structured problem solving um, mechanism uh, there are a number of them you can use Kepner Trigo you can use PDCA plan to check act you can use DMAIC the define measure analyze improve control you can use any number of, uh, of uh, problem solving mechanisms um, but choose one and standardize it for your whole organization because then when you bring people from different teams together they will actually get down to solving the problem much more quickly than uh, than if they don't have the same structured problem solving mechanism now the, the whole idea is initially to, to make sure that we see and prioritize problems and so uh, and, and this sounds kind of easy but um, it, when you're in an organization particularly large corporate organizations there is a tendency to brush problems under the carpet so uh, it, it takes practice to actually see problems because we overlook them so much um, and once we start seeing them and start understanding the relative importance of these problems we can actually get out there and start solving them and the the, the, the fabulous thing about their continuous improvement is it's all about sharing the lessons learned and making sure that others can uh, uh, gain value from that um, and, and this is where it gets uh, exciting for for leaders this is something that has to happen every single day and I, I don't mean uh, every single day, but not on Tuesday and Wednesday because we don't actually have any time uh, and we might do it on Thursday, but definitely not on Friday. Um, no, it's every single day we uh, encourage and, and stimulate the teams to actually pick up at least one problem, however small, to just tackle it so that we know that tomorrow will be a better day than today. And that's a, that is a, a fundamental leadership uh, role. Now, the final uh, leadership uh, behavior is uh, creating vision and aligning goals. It's making sure that, uh, it, that people know what's going on. And one of the best tools to use is, uh, is in fact, uh, visual management. And visual management really doesn't mean anything more than putting stuff on the wall so that people know what's going on. And the funny thing is that, um, you know, in, in, uh, in a traditional organization, we see managers getting out there doing all kinds of micromanagement, demanding lots more reports and stuff. Um, and, and what you find in a lean organization is that you can actually get a huge amount of control and a huge amount of information by just asking people to put on the wall what is, what is useful information to them. Um, and how they can tell the world that they're doing a good job. So they're operational, uh, or they're visualizing their operational performance, they're visualizing um, improvement activities, uh, making sure that there's communication between team members and maybe even across teams, and, and it's all about balancing the workload, making sure that we're doing, that, that the work that we have um, is, is, uh, is not too much, um, and if it's too much, that we're doing something about balancing that. And, and if, if you get teams uh, and, and leaders to work on these aspects and do that visually so that everybody can check what's going on, then you don't need to micromanage anymore. You don't need to have all these various reports um, because it's all just there. It's all there available at, at a time that you uh, can want to go and see it. So, Success actually starts with with teams, and um, one of the uh, Leo Koka said once that the, the speed of the boss is, is the speed of the team. So the, the the team performance it should be your primary concern as as a boss, uh, as a leader in an organisation. So you need to be out there helping your teams to uh, to speed up. Um, just a, a, a little 
definition here. What do we mean by a team? Well, we mean uh, by a team a small number of people with complementary skills. So uh, having uh, 10 um, uh, application developers sitting next to each other, um, it, it does not constitute a team because they don't have complementary skills. And they're probably working on, uh, on different uh, applications. So they'll have maybe different performance goals. They'll have uh, maybe a slightly different approach. Uh, they'll certainly have a different purpose in terms of that they're they're supporting a different um, a different application, um, and they certainly won't hold each other mutually responsible for what they're doing. So what we're trying to do is create teams that actually have these uh, these characteristics. Um, and uh, th that's what we really need to uh, start focusing on. Um, and this is where um, aspects uh, like like DevOps um, uh, come into their own. Um, and really, uh, DevOps is, is all about uh, applying lean principles, but also to the organization of your people. Now, why are teams so important? Uh, there's this uh, there's a guy in, in Germany, 1920s, uh, a guy called Kohler. He's a professor of psychology at the University of Berlin, um, and he he um, researched the uh, the rowing teams. Um, and so I thought I'd do the same kind of thing with with swimming teams. Um, and uh, you can see the effect of the team um, in uh, in the personal bests of the um, uh, American swimming team in the Olympic Games of 2008 in Beijing. Um, and you see that the, the the four swimmers, if you look at their individual personal bests, um, they're all slower than when they swam as a team uh, in the relay race. Um, and looking at, uh, you know, for example, uh, Jason Lazak, he was a full one and a half seconds faster. So he, he swam better um, in as part of a team than he did um, as an individual uh, uh, competitor. And these are things that, that we need to be looking at more when we look at our, our IT teams because we see the same kind of effect happening. Even low performers start really uh, working a lot better when we start really creating teams. Now, one of the, as a leader, one of the first teams you need to get into shape, or maybe even the key team to get into shape, is the management team. We tend to see that management teams are, are neatly segmented so that the managers actually don't have a lot to do with one another. So that, that will be one of the key things you need to do. Um, and the, the, the second thing is to kind of think, is sit down and think about why you believe that your organization should uh, should move towards a lean way of working. Um, it's all about your personal beliefs as to why you as an organization need to act and, and move towards a different way of working. Um, and and the, uh, creating these changes stories is something that really uh, helps to accelerate um, the, the adoption of, uh, of lean uh, in your organization. So that's what I wanted to end with. Um, Alex, do we have any uh, questions? Yes, Niels. Um, we do have a couple. So I want to remind everybody that um, this is an open forum. So feel free to ask a question right now if you do have it. Um, the first one I have here, um, Niels, is all right, you talked about, you know, leaders, you know, not having time. But, you know, how do you get the leaders to spend time on lean things when they do always seem to be busy? Yeah, that's that's an interesting one because it's um, – uh, it, it's uh, it's kind of um, uh, difficult to uh, to really uh, make somebody understand that the world is is changing. Um, so it's all about finding those uh, individual moments that they see uh, something going right in a team um, and understanding, helping them to understand that that's because people are paying attention to to lean principles uh, and that they're applying them. Um, it's also uh, then about um, linking to their needs uh, of um, being able to know what's going on in the teams. Um, and this is the way we get them out of their office, get them uh, engaging with the, the team's visual management, um, and then getting them to kind of say, okay, well, uh, maybe I should have some visual management of my own so that I can talk to my boss um, about uh, what's going on in, in my area of responsibility. Um, um, 
in a much easier way. And what you then see is that, in fact, leaders do have a lot of time, um, but they, they like to make themselves busy. Um, and it's as slow, slowly eating away at half hours or hours of, of a week um, to just spend time learning and uh, and taking those uh, those steps. Um, but it definitely, as it, it starts with very, very, very small steps. All right. Thanks for the awesome answers, Niels. Um, in the interest of time, I think we're going to wrap things up. But if we didn't get to your question, um, they will be passed asks along to Niels and he'll uh, respond to you uh, personally, um, you know, through text email um, if you uh, didn't have your question answered. So just the last thing I want to cover is if you do want to see more on DevOps, Lean IT, and all the other things that Quint covers, uh, please go out and check out our website. Um, we have other thought leadership up there, everything from uh, white papers to blog posts, as well as uh, upcoming webinars, as well as some of the other things we have out there, such as market surveys, benchmarking, and all the things that can help you get started on uh, DevOps or whatever you are doing. And last off, if you do want to talk, Niels, uh, talk to Niels directly, I know he loves talking about this stuff. That's his information right there. Feel free to reach out to him. Um, thank you all for joining today. I hope all the rest of you have a, a great rest of your day. Thank you.